All right, so we talked about anemia, which is the most common form of blood dyscrasia, and now we're going to talk about other blood dyscrasias. So I'm going to go through this um, part fairly quickly because um, you don't need to know a lot of the detail in here. There is a extensive detail in the book, but really it, this is sort of just an introduction to all of these. So polycythemia, um, there's primary polycythemia, which is polycythemia vera, vera meaning true. Um, it's increased production of erythrocytes and other cells in the bone marrow. It's a neoplastic disorder, meaning um, things are being overproduced. So um, you get low serum erythropoietin levels, which is because it's being used up in the production. Secondary um, polycythemia is also known as erythrocytosis. It's an increase in red blood cells in response to pro prolonged hypoxia. So, um, and it's increased erythropoietin uh, secretion. It's a compensation mechanism provided to, uh, to provide increased oxygen transport. So I went to this super interesting lecture. It's been a long time now, maybe 12 years ago. I don't know. And they were talking about um, the genetic, um, the compensation mechanisms for hypoxia for populations of people that live in high altitudes, extreme high altitudes. So the two populations that they examined were, well, actually they examined three populations. One, people, um, Sherpas, people native to Tibet, living in Tibet, um, two, uh, people native to the Andes in South America, and three, people native to other areas that weren't high altitude who went to those areas moved there. And the thing that's interesting is for um, the Andean native populations and people who go to um, a high altitude and try to live there, this is the compensation mechanism that their body uses, secondary polycythemia. Um, your kidneys increase through your um, poietin secretion and you increase your red blood cells in response to that prolonged hypoxia. Um, in the Tibetan populations, they had developed a different mechanism to compensate. Oh, that was fascinating. What, I mean, I don't even know how that happened. And there's some theories as to why that's true, but um, nobody knows. And so it's super interesting. So uh, if you move to a high altitude area, you will develop secondary polycythemia, oh, you know, like the Andes, super high altitude. Um, and But you will never get to where the Tibetan um, people have gotten in their evolution to uh, react to that prolonged hypoxia. I just think that's fascinating. <laughs> so signs and symptoms, descended blood vessels, sluggish blood flow, increased blood pressure, hypertrophy of the heart, hepatomegaly, which is um, hypertrophy of the liver, splenomegaly, which is hypertrophy of the spleen, dyspnea, difficulty breathing, headaches, visual disturbances, and thrombosis and infarctions. So not a good thing. Um, diagnostic tests are um, cell counts. They see increased cell counts, increased hemoglobin and hematocrit, hypercellular bone marrow, meaning more cells in the bone marrow, and hyperuricemia. And that is from the breakdown of the um, hemoglobin. Um, the treatment is to identify the cause. Um, sometimes it's treated by drugs or radiation to suppress bone marrow activity or periodic phlebotomy to take out the extra cells. Interesting, right? So um, if sometimes if the cause is you uh, went to the Andes, the treatment is to come home. So um, the indications of blood clotting disorders um, can be persistent bleeding from gums, repeated epistaxis, which is nosebleeds, petechiae, which are pinpoint flat red spots on the skin and mucous membranes. They're tiny little hemorrhages. Um, frequent purpura and ecchymosis, which is bruising. Um, more than normal bleeding when in trauma. So you um, get a paper cut and it gushes blood. That's more than normal. Um, bleeding into the joint, which is hemiarthrosis. Um, the joints can be swollen, red, and painful. And hemoptysis, which is coughing up blood. Um, blood clotting disorders can also, you can also have um, um, hematemesis, which is um, vomiting blood. And it, 
it shows up as caught what they call coffee ground emesis, which are coarse brown particles. Um, blood in the feces, which um, shows up as black or occult, meaning you can't see it. You can see it in a laboratory test, but you can't see it with your eyes. Um, anemia, feeling faint and anxious, low blood pressure, and a rapid pulse. So here's a picture of petechiae. So you can get petechiae from other things, and we'll, we'll talk about other things, but um, it can be a sign of a blood clotting disorder. Hemophilia A, it's what they call classic hemophilia, and it's a deep deficit or abnormality in factor eight, one of the blood clotting factors. It's the most common inherited clotting disorder. It's an X-linked recessive trait. So it's manifested in men and carried by women. In order to have um, the um, manifestation, you can have you um, the um, mom is a carrier and the dad is not. There are varying degrees of severity. Um, you often have mo prolonged bleeding after minor tissue trauma. So that's the, you get the paper cut and it bleeds like crazy. And um, spontaneous bleeding into the joints and possible blood in the urine or feces. So the diagnostic test, uh, tests are the bleeding time and the uh, prothrombin time are normal in hemophilia A, but the um, activated PTT coagulant time is prolonged because factor eight is low in the serum. So they, there's a drug that treats it, it's called desmopressin, and there is replacement therapy for factor eight. So um, von Willebrand's disease is the most common hereditary clotting disorder, and there are three major types. Symptoms include skin rashes, frequent nosebleeds, easy bruising, gum bleeding, and abnormal menstrual bleeding. And the treatment's based on type and severity. Disseminated intravascular coagulation includes both excessive bleeding and clotting. Um, excessive clotting in the circulation, so you get um, thrombi and infarcts frequently, and clotting factors are reduced to a dangerous level. Um, so you get widespread uncontrollable hemorrhage. So it's interesting, you, you get excessive clotting leading to excessive hemorrhage. Um, but it's because you use up all your clotting factors. Terrible prognosis and high fat fatality rate. Um, it can be a complication of many other primary problems such as obstetrical complications, infections, carcinomas, or major trauma. So, um, this, yeah, bad prognosis. This is the um, chart in the book that tells you how it happens. We're not going to go in detail on it. Thrombophilia is a group of inherited or acquired disorders. There's risk of abnormal clots in veins or arteries. Um, blood testing for clotting factor levels and um, abnormal antibody levels is done in this case. Um, causative condition needs to be treated in order to treat it. So lots of things can cause it, they have to figure out what it is. Um, myelodysplastic syndromes are diseases that involve inadequate production of cells by the bone marrow. So it's kind of the opposite of the polycythemia. Signs and symptoms include anemia, dependent on the type of, um, the signs can also be dependent on the type of deficiencies that occur. It might be idiopathic, um, it might occur after chemotherapy or radiation. Um, treatment depends on what is deficient. So sometimes it's treated by transfusion, chelation therapy to reduce the iron overload, or bone marrow transplantation. Um, leukemias, it's a group of neoplastic disorders involving the white blood cells. So uncontrolled white blood cell production in bone or in lymph nodes or other hemopoietic tissues are reduced. So there might be one or more type of leukocytes that are undifferentiated, immature, and non-functional. So they don't do you any good. Um, they're just, they're there, but they're not working right. Um, large numbers of these um, immature leukocytes are released into general circulation, and they infiltrate lymph nodes, spleen, liver, brain, and other organs. So this is a listing from the book of different types of leukemia. So some of them are acute, as you see, and some of them are chronic. So acute leukemias, um, need to be treated right away. 
Chronic leukemias usually have a exacerbation and remission periods. And a lot of times, chronic leukemias, because they don't have a lot of symptoms, they are detected in normal blood testing. People go in for the regular exam and they go, wow, your, lymph your B lymphocytes are completely out of whack. <laughs> or, you know, something like that. So you can see that um, a lot of these affect different age groups. So acute lymphocytic leukemias, or ALLs, um, not to be confused with the anterior longitudinal ligament in the spine, that's the thing with abbreviations, they can mean a lot of different things. But in the, in the case of leukemia, acute lymphocytic leukemia um, affects B lymphocytes and it's primarily young children that are affected. Um, and then you can see the other ones, the cells affected and the age group affected. So interesting area. So acute leukemias, ALL and AML, um, there, it's a high proportion of immature non-functional cells in the bone marrow and in the peripheral circulation. The onset's usually abrupt or acute with marked signs of complications and occur, occurs primarily in children and younger adults. Chronic leukemias, CLL and CML, have a higher proportion of mature cells with an insidious onset, so it's not abrupt. Um, mild signs and a better prognosis. That's common in older adults. So here's acute lymphocytic leukemia. You can see how the white blood cells, you can't, in, in other stains we've looked at, there have been like um, very clear and distinct nuclear bodies inside the white blood cells, but these guys are just kind of fuzzy. They're undifferentiated. So the usual signs of onset of acute leukemia are frequent or uncontrolled infections because our white blood cells aren't working for us. Petechiae and um, purpura, which are those little blood spots or bruising, like little pinpoint bruises, and the signs of anemia. Um, severe and steady bone pain, weight loss, fatigue, and possibly a fever, um, enlarged lymph, lymph nodes, spleen, and liver, and headache, visual disturbances, drowsiness, and vomiting. So they test with blood smears and they find those immature and altered numbers of white blood cells. Um, the numbers of red blood cells and platelets are also decreased and they do a bone marrow biopsy for confirmation. It's treated with chemotherapy Thank goodness, ALL in young children responds well to drugs. And with biological therapy, um, which is interferon, um, which is used to stimulate the immune system. So leukemia in particular of all the um, cancers has been, um, the survival rate for it is much higher than it has ever been before, which is so amazing. Um, because since it affects young children, um, yeah, we want a good survival rate. Um, complications of leukemia can be opportunistic infections because the immune system is suppressed, including pneumonia, sepsis, congestive heart failure, hemorrhage, liver failure, renal failure, and central nervous system depression and coma. So all of those things can kill you. Multiple myelo uh, myeloma is a neoplastic disease that involves increased production of plasma cells in bone marrow. They don't know what causes it, it's idiopathic. It usually occurs in older adults and the production of other blood cells is impaired as well. Um, there are often multiple tumors in the bone. You get loss of bone and severe bone pain. Really poor prognosis with a short life expectancy. This is um, a skull of somebody in a radiograph of multiple myeloma and all of those black spots on there are tumors.